Hello everyone and welcome back. Hope you are doing good. In this video, we will learn how you can model permanent magnet in Comsol Multiphysics. Here we will have a complete tutorial starting from creating the geometry, adding physics, running the model and we will have a complete workflow so that you can model permanent magnet in the software. So to start, uh, we will first model a bar magnet. So we know from the magnetic properties in a bar magnet we have two poles that is the north and the south and the field line actually travels from north to south something like this right so this we will try to model in Compson multiphysics we'll first do that in 2d and then if it works we will extend that in 3d in the real life situation okay so without wasting any time Let's jump into the software and start learning. We'll start with a 2D model first and then we'll move to 3D. So we are in Comsol Multiphysics. This is the new interface and we'll start with a blank model. So we'll click on blank model here. You can always click model wizard and select the physics interface and so on. But I always prefer to create a blank model and then the settings later. So I'll click on blank model. When you click on blank model, you will have an interface something like this. And here, the first step is to add a 2D component. What is a 2D component? It is basically a two-dimensional physics interface in the software. So to do that, you go on to home, click on add component and click on 2D component. When you click on 2D component, a 2d component will be added in the model builder you can see that so this is basically the 2d component and here we will slowly add up different details for the simulation so before we start let me just briefly explain about the component section so basically a model component is a fundamental part of the model that contains a geometry with its associated physics interface okay and it also include the mesh the variables and other definitions that are local to that component so whatever uh, definition you create here for example a variable uh, it will be within this component okay these are not global these are local variables and the component node defines the namespace for each part of the model that is defined in a model component a model can have several component node so for example this is a 2d node you can create a 3d component and so on and then you can interlink the different physics and so on okay so let's say you have a complicated model you want to solve the two-dimensional part in a particular component uh, that you can do and then you can create a three-dimensional version of the 2d component that also you can do in the same model itself so this is quite useful but in this tutorial we won't uh, go into those details so we'll just work with the 2d model uh, so let's begin so at first we'll go on to geometry and then we'll create a bar magnet okay at first we'll change this to centimeter because in general um, for a realistic system we generally work with bar magnet that is like let's say two centimeter or three centimeter and so on so we'll go on to geometry better we'll go on to sketch and just draw a rectangle to do that we can just drag a rectangle here and if we go to geometry and click on sketch again we have a nice rectangle so this will act as the bar magnet in our model okay now we can always draw a circle that will act like the air around it okay so in finite element simulation it is better to also draw the surrounding area because we are going to solve the equation around the magnet so we'll draw the surrounding so we'll draw a circle to do that go on to sketch click on circle click on the center and just drag you will have a circle okay 
and again if i go on to geometry click on sketch click on build all object and click on zoom extends we have the magnet and the air okay so this is the basic geometry that we are going to work so now that we have created the geometry we'll add the physics in the model okay so we'll go on to add physics we'll go on to acdc and here we'll go on to electromagnetic fields click on magnetic field right click click on add to component now the magnetic field interface will be added in the two domain now let us add some material in the model to do that click on material you can go on to material here click on add material when you click on add material we should have a material tab somewhere in the window click on add material here go on to acdc you can click on magnetic materials i'll just select any one of the magnetic material here because this is just for demonstration depending on the type of project you are working you might select your own material and work and we'll add a blank material so this will be here for air i'll select this domain and for the magnet i'll select the magnet okay so i'll just remove this so we have two material one air and one magnet for air it is asking for three different values that is electrical connectivity so we know that the electrical connectivity of air is zero and let's say relative permittivity one and permeability one okay so this is done now we need to define the magnet in the model to do that you go on to magnetic field you can go on to the physics in the domain click on magnet and select the magnet in the domain selection okay and here you will see that you should have two option that is north and south if you are using version uh, 6 or above if you select magnet you automatically have two different option that is north and south so just click on north and we'll select this to be the north pole and for south i'll click here this to be the south pole okay so we have defined a magnet of this domain where the north pole is this line and the south pole is this line okay so the physics interface is almost done the next step is to add the mesh in the model so we'll go on to mesh and click on add mesh so for time being i'll just delete this older mesh so i'll just rename this mesh one so that there is no confusion so now i'll click on build all okay uh you can see that the mesh is not that great because it is quite coarse so what we'll do we'll manually mesh the model so in the sizing or i'll just create free triangular and here i'll just click on size okay and in the geometry selection click on domain and select the magnet and here in the element size click on custom and check the maximum element size i'll just select 0 0.05 centimeter and minimum to be 0 0.01 and the element growth to be 1.2 and I'll click on build all object now you can see that the mesh density of the bar magnet or the permanent magnet is quite dense and then you have the air domain so the mesh uh, actually looks pretty nice and I think this would work for our model so we have the geometry we created the material we added the physics we created the mesh the last step is to add the study to do that go on to study click on add study if you have already clicked on add study it should have the add study tab somewhere here and here just select on stationary right click click on add study 
and you should have the study added in the model. Since this is a simple model, there is not much uh, settings to change. If uh, we have done the proper settings, we can just uh, run the model and see if it works. So I'll just click on compute and we'll wait a few seconds. If there is any error, it should pop up. So we have our results here. So we have this beautiful plot that is generated by default. So this is the bar magnet. This is the air domain and you can see the magnetic field line that is coming out from the north pole and ending in the south as you would expect in a bar magnet. If I zoom in, you can see the lines as well. So I'll click on zoom extends to better understand the magnetic field line. You can go on to the streamline plot and here click on interactive arrows. What interactive arrows does is that you can animate the field line along the arrow points and see how it behaves. So if I slowly move the cursor along the local time, you can see that the arrow actually moves from the North Pole and then it ends in the South Pole, right? So this is how you actually model the magnetic field in a uh, console in two dimension even in three dimension it is quite uh, similar we'll do that probably in uh, next video but uh, let us do one thing let us actually study the uh, magnitude of the magnetic field in the model here okay so we'll go on to result we'll click on 1d plot group and in the 1d plot group We'll click on uh, the line graph and here we'll define a cut line. Let it be through the center of the magnet. Okay. And we are trying to measure the magnetic field in Tesla. So we'll click on plot. So you can see that as soon as we get closer to the magnet, there is an increase in the magnetic field and inside the magnet, the magnetic field is quite high it is obvious and then it is symmetric along the other side so if i go on to the two dimension plot you can see that the magnetic field will slowly increase here and it will be maximum that is 1.1 tesla inside and then we will have a symmetric pressure on the other side so let us select some other point so we'll go on to define cut line we'll select the first point maybe somewhere here and the second point somewhere here so now what we have selected is that we have selected the magnetic field along the air domain so it is not crossing through the magnet and we are interested to see the magnetic field along this line so personally i would expect that the magnetic field should increase and it should be maximum somewhere here and then again it should decrease and it should be a symmetric plot as well so probably it will be maximum or minimum uh, at the center because all the fields are concentrated along this point. So let's see what happens. So I'll click on plot. Yeah. So when I click on plot, you can see that the magnetic field is actually increasing at the center and then it is decreasing. So if I go on to the 2D plot, you can see that the magnetic field is actually highest at the center and then it is decreasing. So logically also you can see that the results are um, quite aligned with the logical understanding of magnets. So this is how actually you model permanent magnet in Comsol Multiphysics in two dimension. Um, in the next uh, lesson, I'll just model the permanent magnet in three dimension. It is slightly difficult than two dimension. So I think it's better to make a separate video of it. And then probably I'll try to uh, model the horseshoe permanent magnet in Comsol Multiphysics. And uh, yeah, that's it. If you learned something, please do like this video. Uh, majority of you are not subscribed to this channel as well. So it is my request. If you are enjoying this video, do give a like and subscribe this channel. That is the only way I get motivation to create more videos. And as you can see, these high quality videos takes a lot of effort to actually work and render in spite of being in a busy schedule 
in the research work so i would appreciate if you show some love in this videos um thanks for watching and have a nice day ahead